Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes RF Pro tutorial. This is tutorial 5 on working with virtual pins in RF Pro. Remember 1, 2, 3 before we start, subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, so let's go ahead and understand this very interesting concept in RF Pro, which is called virtual pin. Now, what is virtual pin? Well, as you have seen till this video, that all the pins which we are utilizing for our simulation already exist in your layout. And using these pins, or whatever you place in the layout at desired location, when you come to RF Pro, all these pins are accessible under the pins command here. And this pins option can be utilized either in the full EM analysis or in the user defined analysis to create relevant ports for your EM simulation. Now imagine a situation where you do not want to disturb your layout by placing any additional pin because it might cause a conflict in your layout versus a schematic or what we call as LVS. Or there might be a situation where while performing the overall simulation, you found that you need an additional probing location where you might want to capture the S parameter results and later in a schematic, you may want to access that particular node to look at voltage or current waveforms. Now in that case, this virtual pin becomes very handy because these are the pins which you can create within RF Pro itself without disturbing your layout. Hence, they do not affect your layout versus schematic or any other you know, extra things in the original layout. Now, how do we create virtual pin? Well, the process is very, very simple. You simply right click create virtual pin and now you can go to the location and you can see uh, the tool starts highlighting. Now, whether you want to place it on edge at the midpoint, you can select that edge or if you want to place a center or in, you know, inside any kind of, you know, trace pad, you can always do that. And when you click it, you can see a black dot and corresponding X and Y coordinate and the layer in which you have placed the pin. Now, in case you want to place the pin on any of the inner layers in your multi-layer layout, you can of course go ahead and select any of the layers where you want to place the pin. And as long as, for example, if I select M2 layer, and as long as the tool finds that there is a conductor available at that X and Y location, you will see this green check mark. In case there is a void in the plane or void in the layer which you are selecting, and port cannot be created because if you don't have conductor, then obviously the port cannot be created. And then here you will see a yellow exclamation mark kind of icon. But in our case, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and select corn, which is currently the top layer in my design. And also you can give it some name as you might deem necessary. So for example, here I can give it a name called my pin one. And once I say done, you can see my pin one gets added and also it recognizes the net name where it plays. So this particular net, uh, which where I have placed this pin is available in here and that's what get highlighted and associated also with that pin. Now, similarly, you could do a lot of other interesting things. For example, this is, this is the pin which I have placed will be used for the plus pin of the port. What about the negative pin? So you need a ground reference and sometime, uh, you know, when you're creating these ports, you want to place ground at the location of your choice. Now, in that case, you can also create a new virtual pin like I just showed you and put it in, in any of the ground structure. However, when you create one reference plus pin, you can utilize that information to create your own negative pins with great ease on the ground net. For example, if I right click here and I go to this option, create virtual pin at the same X, Y, and then you can pick either the nearest ground net or a power net, or you can choose a specific layer. For example, I can select M2 layer, and now the M2 layer currently is ground net at that location, and correspondingly, you can see that. Now, in case you're not exactly happy with the location, you can always double click on it. You can always change X and Y. You can change the layer on which it got created in case you made any mistake. So all these modifications can be done pretty easily. 
Now, another interesting thing which you could do, which is very useful if you are dealing with CPW or CPWG kind of lines and traces, is to utilize. So if I right click um, the, this earlier plus pin, and here you can see create virtual pin on coplanar ground. So what this action would do is create two um, you know, corresponding negative pins on I1 on the either side of the reference pin. And here you can see two ground net pins getting created. Now, once you have created all the pins as you wanted, how to utilize it in your simulation? You could use these pin information to create a port either in the full EM analysis or user defined EM analysis. Either one is fine. For example, if I want to take this pin here and I drag and drop it into ports, now, because my stack up has a cover plate defined, you can see default reference location is on cover plate. But I can right click, delete the reference pin, and I can use my own reference pin as I want. I simply select them, drag and drop it here. And now you can see two reference pins. So very quickly, you have created a kind of CPW port for yourself. So it is so flexible, so easy to use this virtual pin and you can place the pins wherever you want in your design. Now, when you have done that, and especially if you're working with user-defined EM analysis, when you created a port, because that pin is associated with a net, when you added that pin into your analysis, it also brings over uh, the net. If the signal net is because this pin was uh, associated with signal net, and these two nets were associated with ground net, Hence, both of them appear in your analysis. Now, if you want to finish analysis, you can create another pin on the other side. Rest of the process is as I explained in the earlier videos, you can go ahead and set up your simulation, run the analysis, and then look at the results as you want. So that is the power of virtual pin inside RF Pro, which is going to be very, very useful in many occasions in your circuit or module design. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you like the content presented and stay tuned for more video under this playlist to enhance your expertise with RF Pro.